To me, micronutrients are almost as critical as the macronutrients. Like you know, people talk about calories and carbs, proteins and fats, but your body will be compromised or be optimized based on if you're getting the right amount of, of micronutrients. And magnesium is certainly one of the major ones. Matt, I'm so excited to bring you on today. Thank you so much for your time and for coming on. For people that do not know about you and Bioptimizers, can you tell them a little bit about what brought you into the supplement world and how you started Bioptimizers? My background is a couple of personal training companies. Always loved helping people. What really got me into it was helping my best friend lose 191 pounds in 18 months when I was 19. So I got my degree in kinesiology and science of physical activity and worked with some pro athletes, which was a lot of fun. And then along the journey, I met Wade. He came back to visit his parents. I was a trainer at the gym and we just connected. And then I moved to Vancouver. He was already there. He had a successful personal training company. And then Wade was winning natural bodybuilding championships as a vegetarian, which is again, this is like wow. 20 years ago, which was super weird and unusual. So my marketing mind said, well, maybe we should try putting some something together and selling it. So our first product was called Freaky Big Naturally. It was designed for natural bodybuilders. And it was a hit right off the bat. And then fast forward, we met a man named Dr. Michael O'Brien, who taught us all about enzymes and probiotics. And that was really the, I think the beginning of our journey to biological optimization. He really showed us a different understanding of food and how foods digested and processed and assimilated. So we built our first supplement product, which was called Masslimes, which is still our second best selling product today. It's the strongest protein digesting blend on the market. There it is. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the rest is history. We rebranded to Boptimizers in 2014 because our passion for bodybuilding obviously waned over the years and our passion for health just took over. So yeah, and here we are. Last year, we won the, we were the third fastest growing supplement company in America on the Inc. 5000 list. And yeah, we're just getting started. So. Well, I'm really excited about Bioptimizers. I was, I actually don't even remember how I discovered you guys. I think it was through your magnesium breakthrough, which I want to talk about today because I think so many people are deficient in magnesium and have no idea. And it has such an effect on our sleep, our anxiety, stress, you name it. But I'm a huge fan, obviously, of Bioptimizers. And I feel so much better since I started taking these products. I actually recently just got a NutriVal test done and I found out that I had really low HCL and I have some gut issues going on. So I've been taking your HCL every day and doing the, the mass zymes. I'm also taking the uh, is it P3OM, the proteolytic mm -hmm. probiotics, and I take your magnesium every night. So I'm a huge fan. Oh, and that was the other thing I found out I was really low in magnesium. So I've been taking your magnesium and really noticing a huge difference overall in my digestion. I'm feeling great. So thank you for your products. I love it. I know you talk a lot about sleep and I really want to dive into sleep because this is something that I have really struggled with for a long time. Before I was in nutrition, I worked in music for 10 years. I was a band tour manager. And as you can imagine, they were late nights, crazy nights. And I never could get on a consistent sleep schedule because one night we'd be going to bed at 2 a.m. The other night I would go to bed at 10 p.m. And it was just like all over the place. So when I stopped touring, my biggest thing over the last couple of years is really trying to be on a consistent sleep schedule, which I've heard is probably the most important thing when it comes to your sleep hygiene. So let's just, yeah, want to dive into sleep. What would you say is maybe the number one thing if someone's struggling with sleep that they need to start doing in order to start repairing their sleep hygiene? The first thing, which is free, is light. And you talked about having a consistent schedule. I think it really starts in the morning. And again, credit to Dr. Andrew Huberman for really popularizing getting light in your eyes. It's something that I was aware of for many years. I don't think I understood the importance of it, but I used to wear these glasses called retimers and they just blast blue light in your eyes. There was the human charger, which came out, which would blast light through your ear canal to your brain. Oh. And it always oh. improved how you feel. And of course, for people that live in cold climates, things like the retimer or the human charger can be good ideas because going outside when it's minus 40 is a little rough. So there's a lot of options there, but yeah, getting blue light in your eyes and basically shining light in your brain is really important in the morning. And what that does, it essentially starts a timer. So we talk about circadian rhythms. The way to look at that is like timers. So when you get light exposed, essentially there's a 14 to 16 hour timer that starts, which 
you'll feel more tired essentially 14 16 hours later now we need to also manage darkness which is obviously the flip side of light and ideally about 90 minutes before your target bedtime and you talked about consistency being a key thing you know it's really important to have a target bedtime meaning that you're making a decision i want to go to bed at this time and try to be as consistent as possible and i agree it's a really big deal so around 90 minutes before that whatever the target bedtime is you want to start dimming the lights some people like red light bulbs it's another option and some people like wearing blue light blocking glasses personally i wore those for many years i tend to just dim the lights unless i'm on a flight then i'll wear the true dark glasses the red ones from the raspberries company mm -hmm. those are incredibly effective but at home I just dim all the lights and I just manage it that way. And what that does, it signals to your brain that it's time to go to bed. It basically lowers stimulation because light will keep you awake. And for a long time, I'm a natural night owl. I struggle to want to go to bed because I wasn't managing light. I could stay up till three, four in the morning, as I'm sure you did as well back in your music yeah. career days. So yeah, managing darkness is really critical. And then when you're in bed, you want to be in an absolute pitch black environment, like literally where you cannot see your hand because your skin has photoreceptors. So even if you're wearing a sleep mask, which I'm not a fan of because it can cause your head to overheat and you want your head to be about one degree cooler than your body. So ideally I get no sleep mask and I have like two layers of blackout curtains because I live in the city. So those are the fundamentals of light and darkness and then the second major thing is coolness so you basically want to sleep in a cave and the issue with coolness is that having a cool room for a lot of us is not enough and i'll, I'll use myself as an example i used to sleep in a very cold room but i was still sweating and losing three to four pounds of water a night because my body was trapping heat between my skin and the mattress so the chili pad has been an absolute game changer. That's the one device that I, if you have a hot metabolism, if you're premenopause, menopause, if you work out a lot, if you have a lot of lean muscle mass, then a chili pad can be an absolute game changer for your sleep. And then ingesting the right sleep molecules about an hour before your target bedtime, things like magnesium breakthrough, sleep breakthrough will also have a massive impact. So like to me, those are the top three things along with consistency. I think that's really important. Can we explain a little bit more why consistency is so important? Because this is something that I really didn't understand for a long time. As I was even starting to try to just focus more on sleep, getting more sleep, I didn't understand how important this consistency piece really was. Meter that I is something that's taken me a long time to embrace. So what happens is once you go past your optimal bedtime, and let's say you don't have a an optimal target bedtime and you just, okay, when I'm tired, I'm gonna go to bed. Typically, let's say an hour or so before your target bedtime, you'll start yawning. Your body will actually start to feel a bit tired. Now, if you power through that because you're binging a TV show or you're partying with some rock stars, <laughs> what'll happen is, typically about 30 to 60 minutes past your target bedtime, you're gonna get a cortisol release, which is gonna energize you and completely destroy your deep sleep. I would say the top two things that will destroy your deep sleep is that and eating too close to your bedtime. Those two things will almost always annihilate your deep sleep. And obviously you'll feel it the next day. Like I think it was last Saturday, I missed my target bedtime. I, I was watching some UFC and i felt it on sunday like there's a price to pay the next day when you miss your target bedtime and that's it's a cortisol release that energizes you and for a long time i was addicted to that i used to love staying up till two three four in the morning and working at night and it's certainly not very healthy yeah okay so i have a couple questions about that first of all i've read that isn't there also something about getting that sweet spot of the time period between nine and midnight of getting sleep in those hours why is that? Because you're getting the deep sleep. So you're really optimizing okay. your deep sleep. And again, when you go past that, you're losing that. So the, the difference between, again, getting a good night's deep sleep and not is, is significant. The other aspect to talk about is chronotypes. Because of course, the, mm -hmm. the old saying is one hour before midnight's worth two hours. So there's a great book called The Power of When 
I strongly recommend reading that. It was a relief for me to read that because I am a natural night owl, which he calls wolves. There's three other chronotypes. There's lions, which tend to be morning people, bears, which tend to be in the middle, and then dolphins are insomniacs, essentially. So everybody has a natural gravitation to a certain time where they'll naturally feel tired. Some people might be 10, some people might be nine. Night is optimal for me. I've tried being a morning person and all I felt was pain. So I've given up on that. I go to bed at midnight, tend to wake up at eight and I feel great. So whatever your target bedtime is, again, the key is to try to be in bed like 15, 20 minutes before that so that you're sleeping by the time that the clock hits, so to speak. So there's no optimal bedtime that's universal. It really just depends on the person. Okay. So even if, cause I've read that if you mm-hmm. get those three hours between nine and midnight, it's way more efficient. Even if you were still to get eight hours, let's say like you go to bed at midnight and you get up at 8 AM and you still get those eight hours. Apparently it's still better to get part of those eight hours before midnight. Is that not true? Well, again, it just depends on your chronotype, right? So for me, midnight might be 10 p.m. or 9 for you. So it just depends on, again, how you're hardwired. I think from an evolutionary biology perspective, it makes sense that people have different chronotypes. Mm -hmm. Because if everybody went to bed early, well, the tribe obviously would be at risk from attacks in the middle of the night. If everybody is a night owl, then in the morning, there'd be a risk of attack. So I think it just makes sense that people have different chronotypes. Mm -hmm. And as long as you're in bed, again, before that second wind kicks in, you should get some high quality deep sleep. So that's my opinion on that. Okay, well, that's really fascinating what you said about the tribes. I've never thought about it like that before because I always just thought like, okay, everyone went to bed with the sun, they woke up with the sun rising. But that makes a lot of sense about the chronotypes. And also for people listening, if you don't know what the chronotype is, you can look it up and do a quiz and figure out yours. I very recently actually just learned about the chronotype and I found out I'm a bear. But do you think people can ch- sorry, can change their chronotypes? Because I definitely was a night owl and I used to very much, yeah, identify as a night owl. I felt like I got more energy at night. I got more work done at night. But I did this quiz and I'm a bear and I've actually been more recently really desiring to go to bed 9, 10 p.m. and be up by 6 or 7 a.m. And I used to, that literally was like my hell (laughs) until the last, I would say, year. And now I'm really starting to enjoy it. Yeah, I think you can. And the key is really the light in the morning. Like if somebody wants to go to bed earlier, you need to wake up earlier suck it up for a couple of days and really expose your eyes to, to some bright light. So, you know, which obviously if you're traveling a lot, like if you're traveling overseas, that's when you really need to use that strategy to eliminate jet lag. It's incredibly effective. So the protocol for jet lag is you want to time a melatonin dosage on the plane, basically when you'd want to fall asleep where you're going to land and then When you wake up in the morning, you need bright light in your eyes, big breakfast and a workout. And if you do that two days in a row, you'll essentially eliminate jet lag. That's the key. If you don't, if you're not getting the light, if you're not working out, if you're not getting a big breakfast, it's going to be tough. And I'll see melatonin for two days tends to really help those situations. But yeah, that's another strategy as well is you can use melatonin for a couple of days along with the light again to help reset your clock earlier if that's what you want to do okay interesting yeah i'll be testing that out when i go to europe this summer (laughs) and i'll report back (laughs) yeah it works great Yeah. yeah so let's say somewhat well let's say me i'm actively trying to get deeper REM sleep and deeper deep sleep right now so longer and i also i have a friend right now who's really struggling with this he's not getting longer than i think it's like 30 minutes of rem sleep and he's like i'm doing the sunlight in the morning i'm doing x he's doing all the biohacking things what would be something that would really help someone that's trying to get deeper rem sleep dream optimizer which is coming up this month that's what it's designed to do so Yeah, people will definitely get a huge boost in their REM, their lucid dreaming, the vivid dreaming. It's a huge bump. We're using California poppy seed, which will dramatically improve REM. It's I gave some to 100 people at a mastermind recently, and people were like, man, it felt like I was an avatar. That's one option. That's, That's where sleep molecules come in. There's certain things you can take that will certainly boost your REM. A lot of people report a lot more REM with sleep 
playthrough as well, but I think Dream Optimizer is better for REM. And then there's also the quality of REM. So the faster your eyes are darting back and forth while you're in REM, the more intense, the higher quality REM. And same thing with Deep. So with Deep, it's not just the amount, but the amplitude of the waves, the delta brain waves while you're in Deep will improve the effectiveness of it. DARPA did this interesting research where they were pulsing delta waves when people were in stage four sleep to increase the amplitude. They were basically using entrainment and people were improving their learning while that was happening. And just to give everybody the basics, so deep sleep is where there's a lot of rejuvenation on the body level. And REM is where there's a lot of memory consolidation, emotional processing. So both really critical. And of course, we're just generalizing here. But I'd say ideally, you're getting about 90 minutes plus of deep and two plus hours of REM. It, when most people hit those numbers, they'll tend to feel really good. One comment on sleep trackers is if you're using an Oura Ring, a Whoop, Biostrap, etc., they're only about 60% accurate for assessing the exact amount of deep and REM. The only way you can get actual, actual well, sorry, accurate sleep data is to use electrodes on your head. There was a device called Dream, D-R-E-M, which was quite effective at accurately measuring sleep data, but unfortunately they've become a research only company. Still good, I'm a fan of all these devices, but you gotta look at the data with a little bit of grain of salt. I was literally just gonna ask you this question. So I'm glad that you answered it. I was gonna say, what do you think about the Aura Ring? And then I was pulling up my data to see, so on average, what did you say would be good for REM versus deep sleep for people having to like maybe- 90, minutes, to 90 minutes of deep, two plus hours of REM is solid. Okay. So I'm getting up there. My REM last night was an hour and 42 minutes and my deep sleep was an hour 15. So I need to get yeah. my, I need to get yeah, those yeah. up just you, a little you, bit, but. Yeah. You can optimize that a little further. And the way I think about sleep. So obviously there's people that struggle with sleep and they realize how critical it is, but for everybody listening, that's getting good sleep. My, what I want to say is there's another level. And if you think about over the next few decades, if you're getting great sleep night after night on average, how is that going to impact your health and the quality of your life? It's, in my opinion, it's significant. Well, absolutely. I mean, it it affects almost every area of our life. And there's the obvious ones, right? Like if you don't get enough sleep, your brain's not working as well. You're starving all day. You can't, you just feel like you can't really function. But there's also other things like, doesn't it impact blood sugar if you don't get a good night's sleep? Yeah, I was actually talking to a pro athlete recently. He's an endurance pro athlete. The guy is absolutely shredded. And he was showing me his CGM data. And he was mm. showing me that one bad night of sleep, he looked like a pre-diabetic the next day. Again, typically his wow. blood sugar levels are incredible. And of course, when your blood sugar levels are elevated, you're you're aging faster and all kinds of other potential issues. <laughs> yeah, gre ghrelin goes up about 28% which is the hunger hormone. Your fat loss, if you're in a diet and you're sleep deficient, essentially what happens is the weight loss will be about 50% lean muscle mass, which is horrible. So essentially wow. you're really losing a lot of precious lean muscle mass tissue. Your hippocampus gets damaged, which will compromise your short-term memory. I was having dinner with a good friend of mine and he told me his short-term memory has really been shot recently. And of course, my first question is, oh, how's your sleep? And he says, well, I'm sleeping three, four hours a night. I'm really struggling. Mm. And I'm, I wasn't surprised. And then there's DNA damage. And then on an epigenetic level, there's genes that turn on that are associated with tumors and cancer. So literally like one bad night of sleep is probably one of the most damaging things you can do short term to your health. It's massive. Man. Yeah. I mean, it's in sleep is obviously critical for all of us. And it, I think it's so funny that more recently in the health world, we've really been talking about this a lot, but it was pretty much ignored for a long time. If anything, people were trying to optimize backwards where they were trying to see how little amount of sleep they could get away with getting. And now all of a sudden everyone's like trying to optimize and everyone has aura rings and we're trying to up our REM sleep, which is amazing. But I'm, I'm also guilty of this. I got into nutrition and the impact that food has on our bodies like 15 years ago. And it's not only until the last two years that I've really been actively trying to get my sleep down. I think these are all really helpful tips. The lights, 
Uh, I replaced all of my lights in my house pretty much with like salt lamps. And then my mm. bedroom lamps are so cool. They can, during the day, they're like white light. And then I can turn them into an amber light at night. That has really helped me a lot. I still sleep with a sleep mask. So I feel like I should probably change that now. I need to get blackout curtains, I think, because I get a lot of light pollution from being in the city. But um, yeah, these are all really great tips. So let's talk, you've mentioned a couple of times the molecules to take before bed. So obviously you guys have the, it's called Dream Optimizer, correct? And Sleep Breakthrough and Magnesium mm -hmm. Through. So we have three products that will all significantly improve sleep in different ways. Yeah, we released Magnesium Breakthrough a few years ago. It's been our biggest hit ever. So like went over 1.2 million bottles. And you know, what we're doing in the lab, so we have a lab with 20, brilliant biologists, chemists, and PhDs, like literally people have PhDs in bacteria. And we've been mm. very recently running experiments to prove that when you're combining magnesiums, there's a higher uptake and we're using red blood cells to show that. And yes, there is. So when you're combining magnesiums, we're seeing a much higher uptake in red blood cells compared to single magnesiums. And then we're all, we just proved this week, literally on Tuesday, I got the data that when we're adding cofactors, it's pushing it up about another 30 to 40%. So when we formulate products, we're all about creating maximum synergy, which means like one plus one equals 10. And we do that by running hundreds of experiments. We'll try these combinations of things to see what's where the synergy is. And credit to Charles Poliquin, who told me a few years ago, hey, if you have to combine like multiple magnesiums, it works better. I try that. I try like four different mags. I'm like, wow, this definitely feels more powerful. And then of course I asked, like, how can we make this better? We went to seven and then we added some cofactors on top of that. And it's just been a revolutionary product for people for sleep and for stress. So typically two capsules an hour before bed will have a significant improvement on sleep. There's a few reasons for that. One is that magnesium is a, a precursor to serotonin and serotonin is a precursor to melatonin. And what does a precursor mean? It means it's a building block. So essentially my favorite strategy general with supplements is let's give the body all of the building blocks and then all of the cofactors. And what does a cofactor mean? It, it means that it helps transform that building block into what, we, what we're looking to get in the body. So when you give the body magnesium along with the cofactors, you're able to naturally increase your melatonin production, again, assuming that you're managing darkness. The thing to, to realize about light is that it's destroying melatonin in near real time. So it's really important that, again, you're really managing light and darkness. And if you are taking melatonin, you want to make sure you're taking it with the lights off while you're in bed, and otherwise it's going to be relatively useless. So yeah, and the other thing that the magnesium does is that it helps really shift your nervous system from sympathetic to parasympathetic, which is obviously going to improve your sleep. I really believe that nervous system management is one of the most important strategies to be healthy in general. And for an example, like before we, we hopped on, I just did like six, seven minutes of non-sleep deep rest just to shift my nervous system a little bit. But Magnesium is probably the number one thing that people can take to help basically relax their nervous system, which is obviously going to help them fall asleep. Because a lot of people that truly struggle with sleep is because their beta brainwave activity is too high and they're not able to downshift and their nervous system is just really jacked up in the sympathetic zone. So anything you can take that calms your brain waves down, slows them down, or just shifts your nervous system, calms down your heart, is going to improve sleep. And we can get into some of the other molecules that do that. But yeah, magnesium is really powerful. Yeah, I mean, I've been I've noticed a huge significance in my overall health taking this magnesium. I'm definitely the person you just described where I struggle with falling asleep because my nervous system is like up to here all the time and taking magnesium and also doing all these other things that we talked about have helped to really calm down my nervous system. You've already touched on this, but I wanted to dive a little bit more into it because this is the defining factor of your magnesium supplement. So you guys have all seven types of magnesium in this one supplement. Why haven't other companies done this? Why are you guys the only ones that have even done this? Frankly, I think we care more about effectiveness than most companies. Like we're, we're I'm obsessed with creating best in class products and typically 
like if we don't feel we can do it, we just won't. There are a few copycats that have come out, but yeah, no, it's just, it's one of the things we've innovated on and we're just continuing to do that with all of our products. So yeah, I don't know why nobody else did it before, but yeah, it's, it's incredibly it's effective. Crazy. Yeah. When I found your product, I was like, why isn't anyone else doing this? Because for the longest time, I felt like, yeah, I was taking all these different magnesium supplements because different forms of magnesium do different things. And I wanted X, Y, and Z from this one. And then when I found yours, I was like, oh, this is a no brainer. It helps with the lowering my stress. It helps me get ready for bed. And just so many people, something that I don't think many people are aware of is that we are so magne magnesium deficient as a population. And actually, I want to talk about this a little bit because I think you talked to this point really well as, as well. But because of our soil degradation and our food is not getting as much vitamin and minerals from the soil anymore, as a result, we are all deficient in many of these very vital minerals like magnesium. And no wonder our stress levels are through the roof. Yeah. And one more point too, is like when you're stressed out, you actually leach more mineral, more magnesium. So it's this vicious cycle where you're stressed out, your body essentially utilizes or metabolizes more magnesium, which makes you feel more stressed out. And mm -hmm. I've been there where, where I discovered the magnesium of stacking the magnesiums. I was so burnt out. I couldn't drink a cup of coffee. I would literally feel frazzled where I just feel completely just stressed out, adding any little bit of stress, like even drinking a, a cup of coffee, where now it's like, I could drink three, four cups and still feel calm. So yeah, it took about six weeks of loading. And that's another strategy as well with the magnesium is if you, there's levels. So let's just talk about RDA. And I know you're obviously a nutritionist and deep in that world. So RDA, recommended daily allowance, that's a good baseline, but there's certain things that if you increase the dosage further, you will experience more benefits. And in my opinion, is one of them. And obviously there's the other element of how active are you? And are you an athlete? Are you dealing with a lot of stress? So the optimal amount of these minerals depends from, and depends on person to person. And yeah, magnesium is very difficult to get from food in general. Even if you were trying to eat a hyper-optimized diet and one because of it's obviously been depleted from the soil and depending on the minerals, it's, you're looking at 40 to 80% depletion over the last 60, 70 years. And farmers yeah. are not, they don't really care about that. They're just trying to grow the biggest crops possible to maximize their profits. And even organic food, all it means is that it just hasn't been sprayed with, sprayed with herbicides, fungicides, and pesticides. Doesn't mean that they've remineralized the soil and they're hyper-optimizing for nutrients. A good friend of mine went to, I'm not gonna name the grocery store, but it's the biggest one in Florida. And they went to the grocery store and there's something called Bricks, B-R-I-X. And there's devices are about 150, 200 bucks that you can grab a little bit of a fruit or vegetable and put it in this Bricks meter. And it will tell you essentially the nutrient density of that fruit or vegetable. And it was essentially completely void of, of nutrients. Wow. So yeah, basically you're just getting, there's some minerals in there, but you're really just getting a lot of water, fiber, some macronutrients, but it's really void of a lot of micronutrients. And when I think about food, when I think about nutrition, when I think about nutrification, to me, micronutrients are almost as critical as the macronutrients. Like people talk about calories and carbs, proteins, and fats, but your body will be compromised or be optimized based on if you're getting the right amount of micronutrients. And magnesium is certainly one of the major ones. I think potassium is another one that a lot of people are deficient in, especially depending on which diet people are following. Like if you're ketogenic, you're almost guaranteed to be deficient in potassium. I've been keto, cyclical keto, and on and off, but for almost 30 years. And when I realized how deficient I was in potassium and added that in, it was transformative for my hydration and how I felt. So I, with a lot of these minerals, when you're getting the right amount into your body, it just transforms. And potassium, by the way, is an incredible sleep molecule, which I didn't realize oh. until we were formulating sleep breakthrough. Yeah, credit to Mr. Newt. So Mr. Newt, who's one of our formulators, an absolute genius, I said, yeah, we need potassium in here. And I'm like, why? Well, he says it helps quiet down your, helps slow down your heart, relax your heart, which I thought, okay, that's interesting. So I dived into the literature 
and found this really interesting research from 2004 on odd mutant flies, okay? And what they found was that sodium excites neurons and potassium quiets them down. So it's a great strategy to actually put, and it's something I've been doing for a long time, I'll put some Himalayan salt in my water in the morning, and it's great, it'll help basically wake up your brain, excite your neurons, but at night, if you can shift more to potassium, it will help quiet your brain down. And for people that tend to wake up and go to the bathroom at night, it'll help minimize the odds of that. Because when your sodium to potassium ratio is off, you will go to the bathroom two or three times more often. So when you're getting enough potassium, you hold your water better, right? Potassium is the molecule of hydration. So that's one of the reasons why we put that in sleep breakthrough. I've never heard that before. That's fascinating. I love mm -hmm. doing this podcast. I always learn new things. Does magnesium impact melatonin at all? Yeah. Again, it's a precursor. So it is a building block for, the, again, the serotonin. That's right. Okay. And yeah. So, so when you add like P5P to it, it helps convert more of that magnesium into serotonin. And again, we just proved in the lab that the P5P increases the uptake of the magnesium in the red blood cells by about 30 to 40%. So yeah, P5P, which is a bioactive form of vitamin B6, is a really powerful cofactor. It's a great supplement in general, but when you combine it with magnesium, it's, it's a great combination. Everyone's kind of divided on the conversation about melatonin. Like some people say it's okay to take it. Some people you shouldn't be say you shouldn't be taking it at all. I know you guys have a sleep product. One, I believe that has it in there and then the rest of them don't. Is that right? I've been testing sleep molecules for years and years. Just to share that part of my story. I think it was like eight or nine years ago. I was tracking with the Aura Ring with the Zio. I saw my deep sleep was zero to 15 minutes. I was feeling horrible in the morning, my testosterone crashed into the low 200s, my body fat was the highest ever on a DEXA scan. And I just realized the number one thing I can do is invest in my sleep. So I've invested about 45 grand and all kinds of, yeah, anything that I thought could improve my sleep, bought it. And that includes thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars on sleep molecules. So melatonin is obviously the number one sleep supplement in the world. And I tried it and I tried varying dosages. And it never worked for me because I would wake up after five, six hours instead of sleeping a full night's sleep. And I've heard Tim Ferriss talk about it and Andrew Huberman talk about that. Some people have a genetic variant that causes the melatonin to wake them up a couple of hours earlier. There's a spike in body temperature that happens earlier than usual. So it never worked for me until I got into the literature on how much melatonin your brain actually produces at night, and it's 10 to 80 micrograms. So even a half milligram dose is 50 times, 50 to 12 times the natural amount that your brain would naturally produce. So I'm like, well, why are people, a couple of years ago, people were recommending like 350 micrograms. I tried that. I was still getting the same thing. When I lowered my dose to 40 to 80 micrograms, which I feel is like what your brain would naturally produce, it's been working incredibly well. I don't get the wake-up effects. And if you look at the literature on melatonin, it does help you fall asleep, but it doesn't necessarily improve REM or deep or anything else. So for people that struggle to fall asleep, it can be good for people that want to reset their clocks because they're traveling or they want to wake up earlier. As we mentioned earlier, I think it's a good solution. I'll use it maybe two, three days a week. And again, we have a product called Dream Optimizer. So we wanted to build something that would allow people to get the exact amount that works for them. And the only way we felt we could do that was a spray. So around 18, 20 micrograms per spray, so I'll typically do three sprays, sometimes four, and it works really well. Of course, we have the other ingredients that will help increase REM, like California poppy seed. So yeah, it's a really interesting product, but I think people's advice around hyperdosing melatonin is, I think for short periods of time, and of course it has all of these other properties, it's an incredible antioxidant, but I'm definitely a little bit concerned. Some people believe that your body doesn't downregulate, but I found research that showed that it did downregulate in rats. 
And I've talked to people that went to really high dosages of melatonin. It took them like six weeks of getting off of it to be able to sleep normally again. So in my opinion, there's probably some level of downregulation when you're hyperdosing the amounts that some people recommend. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. I've been going back and forth on this because as I shared, my sleep journey has been really interesting. My biggest thing is that I just have a hard time falling asleep. Once I'm asleep, I'm out. A train could go through my room and I'm good. Like I just, because I sleep really heavy and melatonin has really been helping me a lot. I feel like similar to your story, I've tried every thing under the sun. And I've found recently that melatonin really is what helps me fall asleep. And I don't want to get to a point where my body is so dependent on it. Actually, I'm going to start, uh, I just got your dream optimizers. I'm going to start trying to take that and like taper myself off a little of the melatonin and see if that helps. But I have found the magnesium has been helping me a lot. All, everything else I've shared has helped me as well. So maybe if I can get on lower doses of melatonin, that would help. But I'm just curious. I always like to hear people's opinion on it and if it's good or bad to take at night. Yeah, the dream optimizer. So, so here's my opinion on like building your own sleep system. First of all, magnesium breakthrough, use it every night, but the sleep breakthrough and the dream optimizer, first of all, I use sleep breakthrough every night, but the dream optimizer, I'll use about three, four days a week. One pattern that I noticed from tracking my sleep for almost a decade now is that if I train really hard, so if I do something that's physically demanding, like today I'm going to go do squats after this podcast, my body will want more deep sleep, which makes sense, right? Because I tax my nervous system. And when I do brain training or anything that's mentally strenuous, my brain tends to want and get more REM. So the days where I'm pushing my brain harder, I'll use Dream Optimizer to get more REM. And the days where I'm pushing my body harder, I tend to won't. So... Yeah, typically I'll use the Dream Optimizer three, four days. But what you just said is another way to use Dream Optimizer. And we have people that have used it to taper off from really high dosages. And the other ingredients in Dream Optimizer will help your body also produce some melatonin. So it's got a really nice long tail to it. And yeah, it's working really well. Awesome. That's really interesting what you just said. That's cool. Okay, well, I'm going to start doing that and I'll report back. I'm excited to try it. Yeah. So as far as eating before bed, what do you think is a good window? Because I think this is also another thing that people aren't super aware of, but it, it's being talked about more. Yeah, again, I'm from the bodybuilding world and probably the worst advice that's ever come out of the bodybuilding yeah. world is drink a massive protein shake before bed, which I did for many years. Ugh. And again, I would say the number one destroyer of deep sleep is a big meal two hours before bed. It seems to be universal. I've seen that with myself, with clients, like anybody I've looked at their sleep data. And if they're eating a big meal two hours before bed, their sleep is destroyed. So I would say three hours is a good minimum window. Four is probably better. And I've talked to people that have told me five is even better. So some people will say, well, what can I eat? Okay, well, two things. One is back to serotonin. We talked about how serotonin is a precursor to melatonin. Carbohydrates will increase serotonin in the brain. So a lot of people have reported that if you do a teaspoon of honey, they'll get better sleep. And the mechanism, in my opinion, is that it's increasing the serotonin, which is helping the body produce more melatonin. And I've tested that myself with fruits especially if I'm deep in ketogenesis or I'm doing a multi-day fast. And I know the autophagy police scream foul here, but if I do like half a cup of fruit before bed, I'll get way better sleep. And again, it's just nothing magical about the fruit. I just think it's the carbohydrates increasing the serotonin, which helps me sleep better. And I've noticed better sleep scores when I do that. So that's one thing you can eat. Again, maybe like an apple or half a cup of berries, teaspoon of honey, th those things tend to work really well. So it's something to try. And the other one's amino acids. So L-theanine, which is one of my favorite sleep molecule, GABA, another incredible amino acid, another incredible sleep molecule. Those amino acids will be digested in, in 30 minutes. So amino acids, when you take them 30 to 45 minutes, they're gone. And obviously they have all kinds of really powerful effects on the nervous system, as well as on the brain. 
GABA will reduce beta brain waves. So for people that have hyperactive beta brain wave activity, can't fall asleep, they're ideating, the monkey mind's going, the hamster wheel's rolling. GABA and pharma GABA, in my opinion, is one of the strongest GABAs there is, is really good for reducing beta brain wave activity and increasing alpha brain waves, which can help people feel calm but alert and more heart centered and help prepare them for bed so that's why we included that in sleep breakthrough i was going to be my next question is what are your favorite molecules for sleeping so gaba l-theanine and are those both in dream optimizers no they're in sleep? sleep breakthrough sleep breakthrough okay so sleep breakthrough is designed to really shift your nervous system to slow down your brain waves and to help your body naturally produce melatonin Whereas Dream Optimizer is designed to give your body the perfect amount of melatonin as well as boost REM, and it's just completely different. So I mean, they're really complementary. And one of the things we do at Bob Optimizer is, is we realize that some people are different. Everybody's got genetic mutations and variants. So we like to create a really complete suite of products. And we've done that with enzymes and with probiotics. Now we're doing that with sleep. So yeah, just completely different. But yeah, my favorite sleep molecules are probably L-theanine. It's probably been the thing I've taken the most. What is L-theanine? It's an amino acid derived typically from green tea. And that's why some people prefer green tea or yerba mate over coffee because the L-theanine helps relax your nervous system without creating drowsiness. So it's a really good molecule to take with stimulants or if you take it by itself before bed, you'll basically again feel more relaxed and helps quiet down the brain. So that's been a staple of mine. GABA, and if you look at insomniacs, they're about 30% deficient in GABA. So for people that really struggle with falling asleep, I would say the majority of them are GABA deficient. So GABA can be a really powerful sleep molecule. And we tested all kinds of GABAs and pharma GABA is certainly more potent than most. I would say probably the strongest one on the market. And then the magnesium, I think those are the top ones. Glycine is another amino acid that's in sleep breakthrough. And if we're talking about amino acids, I think that glycine is one of the most important amino acids for health. It has all kinds of incredible benefits like collagen production as well as helping detoxify the body. But when you take it by itself for sleep, it cools down the body, which is really interesting. It actually helps push the blood to the extremities. It improves REM. And here's my favorite aspect of it. And that is, if you're not getting enough sleep, you will feel far more refreshed the next day. So it's a really powerful molecule and I've definitely noticed that when I take sleep breakthrough and only sleep six or seven hours, I feel better than ever the next day compared to when I didn't used to take it. So yeah, glycine is a really, is a great sleep molecule. I really, I just want to say, I love all these products that you created. You're really helping a lot of people. And I wanted to ask you too about the sleep breakthrough versus the dream optimizer. Can you take those together? Yeah. Like I, like for me, every night I take two caps of magnesium breakthrough and I take sleep breakthrough every night. Then dream optimizer is about three, four days a week. And like I took a red eye a week and a half ago and you, you do a sleep breakthrough, two caps of mags, and you do a, maybe four or five sprays of Dream Optimizer with the true dark red glasses, and you're out. Wow. You're out. And usually, like, the agents have to, the stewardess have to wake <laughs> me up when I land because I pass out. So and they're like, man, did this guy take a Xanax? And you're like, no, just all natural stuff, baby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you feel good and you're ready to rock. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, well, I'm very excited to get into this Dream Optimizer. I'm going to start, I'm going to take that tonight. Yeah, try. Um, if you're already taking melatonin, I would say try six sprays. Like I okay. take three or four for somebody that's taking a lot of melatonin. Try six and prepare yourself for intense, lucid, vivid dreams, which is always interesting to me. People either love lucid, vivid dreaming or they hate it, which is always interesting to me. And I think... My opinion on that is people that have a lot of unprocessed emotional trauma mm -hmm. tend to have dreams that aren't as pleasant. If people have done maybe more emotional work, their dreams tend to be probably more pleasant. That's just my opinion, but that's it seems to be the case.
I think it's an important distinction to make. And I think more and more people are waking up to the fact that we all have things that we need to address in our life. Life is hard. We all have traumas and things that we've been through that we may or may not be avoiding that could be hindering us in many ways. Yeah, one of my favorite books, just in general, in terms of improving your life as a human being is The Body Keeps the Score, which is a real masterpiece. Yeah, the gist of the book, for anybody that hasn't read it, is that when traumas occur, if you don't process them essentially in real time, they will get stored into your limbic system. And then that makes you reactive to similar threats in, in the future. And the people that I've worked with and I'm certified in EFT, for example, my mentors have, uh, will say that everybody, even if they've had a good life, has like 300 to 500 micro traumas. So these are things that were painful, that were just weren't processed and that were suppressed. And then most people just like, accumulate these over time. And it's just been an incredibly transformative experience to work on these. And there's all kinds of ways to work on these EFT, neurofeedback, EMDR, like a lot of people have used plant medicine, a lot of tools in the toolbox, but people that have trauma, I can't strongly recommend enough to spend the time, work on clearing those and the quality of your life and your emotional health would just go to a different dimension. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad that you brought that up. I have a really good friend, Dr. G, Dr. Gonzalez. I don't know if you know his work. He's a naturopathic doctor. And more recently, this has been the forefront of his work is Mm -hmm. helping people learn how to release their emotional trauma. And this has really been his work in the last year. Like he went from one-on-one clients to then now doing this emotional release thing and just witnessing him and the work that he's been doing and people and how it's really been helping improve people's lives has been pretty incredible. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. Well, out of everything we talked about today, is there anything you feel like we haven't covered that people really need to know? No, I think we covered all of it. To recap again, light in the morning, darkness 90 minutes before bed, and then take your sleep molecules an hour before bed, sleep in a cold room. We didn't really talk about mattresses, but get a great mattress, yeah. especially if you're a side sleeper. I recommend a memory foam. My favorite brand is called Essentia, Canadian company. They do these incredible memory foams with different densities using tree sap and other more natural materials. You're not getting off gassing for six months like some of the other ones. Get a chili pad if you have a hot metabolism. And yeah, that's the fundamentals we talked about. Again, consistency is critical. Don't want to eat three, four hours before bed. And if you do all of those things, your sleep will transform. And yeah, use a sleep tracker to try to measure these things. And something to realize is All of these things compound, like Einstein Einstein said that compounding interest is the eight wonder of the world. And that's true for health as well. Like a lot of people want one thing, but when you start stacking and combining two, three, four, five, six things, you get these amazing exponential results that are just transformative, whether it's through sleep or muscle building or fat loss or brain optimization. So my recommendation is to do one thing at a time and keep adding more and more. And you'll notice that next thing you know, you're getting 90 minutes of deep and two hours of REM and you feel amazing in the day next day. That's a really great advice. So we always hear that we should sleep on our back, that it's really bad to sleep on our sides. I just have to tell you, I cannot fall asleep on my back. I've literally tried for years. I'll do it. And then I can never fall asleep until I go to my side. That was interesting. More re- more recently, I've been waking up on my back, but I've not been able to fall asleep on my side. Do you think there really is a huge difference in which way you sleep? We're the same camp. I can't sleep <laughs> on my back. My brain, your brain has a gyroscope. And when you're leaning forward versus back, it it activates certain parts of the brain, which is interesting. So I think there's something to that. Typically, what I do is I'll lay on my back for 10, 15 minutes, and I go to a theta brainwave state, which everybody hits twice a day. We didn't really talk too much about brainwaves, but there's like five major brainwave ranges. So like right now, we're in a beta brainwave zone. We're talking, we're alert. If you slow your brain waves down, you're into alpha, which when people start meditating, they'll that's typically the first place they'll gravitate to or hit. It's a good place to start doing neurofeedback. But when you're falling asleep and you start dreaming and you're aware of your dreams, that's theta. And I love hanging out there for like five, 10 minutes. It's a really good place to, to do some spiritual work. 
and then you pass out. So if I'm on my back, I struggle to, I'll just stay in theta. Like it's hard for me to shut that down. So I'm a side sleeper, but if you're a side sleeper, you need, in my opinion, you almost need a memory foam mattress. And especially if you have wide shoulders, if you have wide hips, if you have larger legs, you need to sink in more because you want to have an even pressure as, po as much as possible from your head to your toes. And if you have wide shoulders or wide hips, for an example, and you're not sinking in enough, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have blood flow constriction in your shoulders and hips, and you're gonna be tossing and turning all night. So again, for people that are heavier, they need to have a softer mattress. People that are shorter, they need a softer mattress. And if people are wider, they need a softer mattress. So you gotta pick the right mattress for you. If you're lighter, if you're narrower, and if you're taller, you want a denser mattress. So you got to pick the right density for your body. But again, if you're a side sleeper, I strongly advise getting a memory foam mattress. Before we go, I want to ask you a question that I ask all of my guests. Sure. And I'm very curious to hear what your answer is. What are your personal health non-negotiables? So these are things that you do every day to optimize your health. And no matter how busy you are, these are your health non-negotiables. Like lifting weights for me, it's as much mental as it is physical. If I don't lift weights for three, four days, you know, I remember hearing Joe Rogan, like he needs struggle. I think I'm one of these people where I need just that physical struggle in the gym. So yeah, lifting weights and then just great sleep. But those are my top two things where, you know, obviously if I'm on the road, it's hard, but I'll do everything I can to optimize it. And number one struggle on the road is overheating. And for anybody that's in the hospitality industry, please optimize the bedrooms in the hotels. I will pay a premium to get a chili pad or any of these devices because that's the only time I'll wake up because I'm too hot, sweating or whatever. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for this, Matt. This was so amazing. I feel like I'm going to sleep like a baby after implementing all of these amazing tips that you gave. And also, I just want to say thank you again for creating all these really incredible products with Bioptimizers. They have really improved my health. And I know a lot of people feel the same way, which is why your brand is so popular. So thank you so much for your time. And also please let people know where they can find Bioptimizers, where they can find you. Yeah. So first of all, we have a special discount code for all your listeners at sleepbreakthrough.com forward slash real foodology code is real foodology. I think the code is already going to be applied. If you punch that URL, bioptimizers.com, you can check out all of our products. We have a complete suite of digestive products. We have enzymes for every diet. But I got one more suggestion for you yeah. on the for your for you personally, which is biome breakthrough. On the gut health side, we've been doing hundreds of experiments on every probiotic. That mixture, that blend of not just probiotics, but the other ingredients is the one of the few products that will actually produce biofilm in your intestinal tract. So in terms of getting rid of bad bacteria and replacing it and creating really healthy colonies, it's an amazing product. And by the way, we're really excited to announce that the ultimate nutrition book reference guide encyclopedia is coming up. September is going to be published by Hay House. We've been working on this for three years. It's going to be close to 600 pages. We cover every nutritional strategy, every diet everything from nutrigenomics to every type of goal from fat loss, muscle building, athletic performance. So we'll probably wait and I'll, I'll come back in when the time's right. But yeah, we're really excited about that. And we have all kinds of other things like a women's product line coming out, men's product line, skincare, drinks, all kinds of amazing things. So yeah, we're just getting warmed up. Awesome. I can't wait for that book and I can't wait to see what else you guys create. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Also, we're coming out with nutrigenomic tests that are going to integrate with an app and allow people to really personalize their diet. So I think that's, and that's a big, the core message in our book is you want to build the perfect diet for you based on your genetics, based on your goals and based on your psychology. So that's what we're going to help people do. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time and thanks for listening today, guys.